Today I thought we'd go through how I prep my cellulose fibres to dye, ready to dye with the earth pallet cotton dyes, or they, they're called cotton dyes, but they're actually specifically for dyeing cellulose fibres. Now, here I've got um, tensil, which is um, a fibre that's made from wood pulp. And as I did with the wool, I actually wind it into, maybe I'll just move it up a bit, into 100 gram loose bundles or balls. I just wind it around reasonably loosely to make sure that the dye can penetrate in there fairly well. And then I put them in, in the small bags. So still in the mesh bags, but because I only dye these in lots of three, I would only put three in each bag. Well, hang on a minute. I'll just put the other one in here. Now, as you can see, that one's got a green tag on it. The green tag is just the flagging tape again, and I've written on here, I'll turn it upside down. It says T-E-N, which is short for tensile. And as I said, I have got a couple of different colors of this. And what I do is tie it on the end because I'm dyeing, I'm planning to dye a few different cellulose fibers over the next few days. And a lot of them looks quite similar. A nice shiny fiber, soft fibers. And it can be quite difficult to tell the difference between them. So I just like to make sure I've got them all ready to go and, and identified. Okay, so all I do is just tie this flagging tape right near the end. It's quite stretchy and I just tie it once and that's it. And get another bag. Okay. So these mesh bags, as I said, you can buy them from the supermarket. And I put them in to soak in these mesh bags. Ah, no such luck. The zip doesn't work. Okay. Lucky I had some rubber bands handy. So I just put them in there and I'll go ahead and do a couple more bags of these and then I'll show you how I soak them. Okay, so I'll show you how to soak these and what I soak them in. For a start, I've got a 10 litre bucket and um, in that I'm going to put four litres of water. Each of these jugs is a two litre bucket a two litre jug, sorry. So I'm just going to put the water in first. And then I'm going to put, this is one cup full of soda ash. Soda ash, um, it's not going to burn your hands away, but it's best to not actually have your hands in it um, for too long, all right? So I'm just going to put that in my bucket and I'm going to stir it so that it doesn't make sure it doesn't splash up at me because you don't want it splashing up at you. It's best to wear eye protection when you're adding these things. And this has got urea in it. This is an eighth of a cup, or sorry, a third of a cup of urea. And I'm gonna add that in. This is not critical. Urea is not critical for dyeing these fibers, but it does help to open up the fiber scales and let the dye penetrate in more. All right, so I'm gonna add that. The urea is not poisonous, it won't hurt you. It's actually a fertiliser, so um, it's good for your garden. And I'm also going to add a little bit of the Fixing Agent A from Earth Palette. And I'm only going to put maybe about a capful. And the only reason I'm putting that in there is because it's a surfactant and it'll break the surface tension of the water. So now I'm actually going to add more water to this because I usually use one cup of soda ash to a 10 litre bucket of water. All right, so I'll just grab a bit more water and put it in. Okay, so I'm back, I've added more water, but I've still only got about eight litres in there, so about twice as much as I originally put in. And the only reason I do it is to make sure it all mixes carefully, uh, thoroughly. You can use, you know, less water if you want. And then I put in my fiber so I've, this is the tensile fiber that we tied up before and i put it in push it down with my handy little doodad again because i don't want to put my hands in here and these 
soak fairly well. For this, for dyeing cellulose fibres, you can add just a normal dishwashing detergent or laundry detergent as a surfactant, as a surface, as a water surface tension breaker. There's no problem with that. Unlike wool fibres, the, the detergent won't hurt the cellulose fibres at all. And you can leave your cellulose fibres in this solution to soak. It won't, it doesn't matter how long you leave them in there. Um, you can leave them in there for days. And um, in between using, doing this, once you drain your fibres and take it out and dye it, whatever solution is left in this bucket, as long as there's no dye in it, you can put the lid on it and put it in a safe place away from children and reuse it multiple times. So that is the main reason I use this method to soak my fibres ready for dyeing because I reuse the same solution for many different um, dyeing sessions. So I'm back with another batch of cellulose fibre. This is mint infused fibre. It's um, a slightly different colour to the tensile fibre or the bamboo, which are quite white. Um, apparently it's uh, ground up mint powder infused into the fibre. Doesn't smell like mint at all. So I'm not really sure what the purpose of it is, but it's interesting. And as before, I tie the bit of um, tagging, flagging tape onto the end so that I can identify it. Although this one's not really any trouble to identify because it's different. And then I put them in the mesh bag again and I'll put it into soak. The same as I did with the tinsel in the same solution with soda ash, urea, the fixative A. No such luck with a good bag here either. Okay. So that's them done. I'll put them onto soak and I'll come back with a couple other different fibres as well to show you the different fibres that I'm planning to dye over the next few days. Okay, this is the next fibre I'm going to dye over the next few days. This one is bamboo fibre. As you can see, it's very similar to the tensile. And I weigh them out as the other ones into a loose 100 gram or whatever you choose to dye it in. I dye in 100 gram lots. And then I put them in the mesh bags. So before I do that, I'll show you, I tie, this has got a white piece of flagging tape and I just write something on there that it identifies it to me so I know what fibre I'm dyeing so I can make sure I don't make any mix-ups and keep them all separate. Okay, and then into the bags as before and I don't know why a lot of these have got broken zips. Okay. And then I put my rubber band on the top and I soak them in the same solution. I did the other two fibres, the soda ash, the water soda ash, urea and the fixative A or any other detergent or surfactant. The water doesn't have to be hot. It can just be cold water. Cold water's fine. Put them in there to soak. I'm actually planning to start dyeing these tomorrow, so I will leave mine overnight. And then what I don't dye tomorrow, I'll dye the next day. So this will soak. Some of them will soak for two or three days before I get to them. Okay, this fibre here is hemp fibre. As you can see, hemp has quite almost a bit whiskery, stringy. It's quite soft and um, gets softer as you, the more you work with it, the more you wash it and wear it, and um, it actually gets much softer. Um, it's very strong fiber, except when it's in top form. Now let me find the end of it here. In top form, it actually breaks apart fairly easily if you're not careful. But once it's wet, once it's soaked, it actually becomes quite strong. As you can see, there's lots of bits come off it. Hemp is not my favourite fibre to dye, or well, actually, it's not, I don't mind dyeing it. It's not my favourite favorite fibre to prepare for dyeing because the bits come off it all the time and it's quite fluffy and loose hairy bits, which I don't really particularly like. But to spin it, once it's made into yarn, it actually is nice, strong yarn and um, certainly quite usable 
you know, much cooler for summer if you don't, if you can't work with wool. Okay, so, and as, as before with the others, I've got a little bit of flagging tape and I've got something that I can identify it with on the top, on the, written on it, and I just tie it on the end as with the others. And I put that into soak again after I've put it in my little mesh bags and um, put it into soak in my batch sizes, which is three. Yep, still no working zip. And then I'll put that onto soak the soda ash, the urea, and the fixative A or a detergent of some sort. So this is a cellulose fibre that, according to the supplier, has been infused with crushed up pearls and apparently that gives it more of a luster. So as, as with the others, I wind them all into 100 gram batches there. And then I tie, sorry, I should show you that one. On this one, I've just got a PL. So I don't know, this is pearl. And um, I just tie it on the end. Oh, I forgot to even wind it into a ball. Wind it into a nice loose ball so that all the soak can get into it. And then I put them in here. Now I've run out of small bags, so I just use the bigger bags and just put two batches in with it. So I know that this bag has got two batches of it in. Yep, very exciting having a zip working. And of course this one doesn't. And then I put them on to soak and then dye them. I'll be back to show you how we dye them in the next video.